I don't mean this literally to question your memory, but like the 25-point halftime deficit, you know, are, are you, as you go into the archives, do you, are there a, a game or two that you think of and that had any commonalities between you guys being able to erase something that, that was that large like tonight? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think the first game that could come to my mind, I don't know how many points we were down, but um, we were in a playoff series back in Cleveland. My second stint playing against Indiana on the road. And, uh, and we made a huge comeback in a, in a postseason game uh, to cap that game off. I don't know if it was game three or game four, um, you know, in that series. But, um, you know, tonight was literally a tale of two halves. I mean, uh, obviously we came out and played exceptionally well in the first quarter. Then they jumped on us and, and completely just, you know, knocked us down, you know. And um, uh, thank God for the standing eight count, you know, we was able to, you know, to stay in the stay in the bout and uh, and then uh, you know turn the game around the second half. Darvin had mentioned the ball pressure uh, from Dennis and from Pat in the perimeter, and in your case, it seemed like just able to keep getting to the rim. I think you were nine to ten in the paint at, at one point. A lot of that coming to the third was that. Was your mindset any more geared towards that, or was that just what was coming off the stops? Well, I mean, when you're down, you try to play a little bit more desperate. You try to you know see you know how much you got left in the tank and try to. You know, push the envelope a little bit more. So, like you just said, it started with Dennis and, and Pat just getting up into, you know, um, Dame and, and, and Anthony, and you know, and then it's the back line's um, you know job to communicate through them because they get a lot of pick and rolls, a lot of flare screens, things of that nature. So, you know, Thomas, William, myself, and the rest of the guys, Troy, everybody that was out on the floor, just trying to communicate to those guys off pick and rolls or whatever the case may be, ISOs, and, and even when we got switches, we was able to um, you know, just try to keep a, you know a, a hand up on those guys because they were, you know. You know, obviously, Damon, we know how great he is, and, and Anthony is uh, definitely a, a shining star in this league. So just try to make it tough on him, and um, in the second half, we was able to do that. LeBron, obviously, when you fall down 25 in the first half, guys are going to discuss what's going on in the halftime locker room. And Darvin said that he felt like his message was like, we don't want to keep watching the same movie. Uh, how, how did you guys as a group not just have it be talk tonight and then, you know, actually – Go out and do the things that you were discussing. Uh, I mean, just I guess it's only there's one or two ways you can either go out and you can just lay down and get ready for the next game, or you can see what can happen in the third quarter, make a game of it. And uh, you know, for us as competitors and our team and our makeup this year, uh, we're not a lay down team. Uh, it's just it's just not the makeup of our club. Um, so uh, we came out and and, and showed the makeup of our club in the third quarter, give ourselves a chance going into the fourth. And turn it into a you know a few possession game into a couple possession game and one possession game was able to take the lead. Uh, I believe on uh, that Thomas three on the left wing finally took the lead. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So you know after that we just started trying to get some stops and keep building that lead up. You know from one to three to five or whatever the case may be, all the way up into seven at one point. Um, when teams fight back like that so often, like they expend so much energy that like when it gets tight, things kind of fall apart. Um, this is two games in a row where you guys are pretty good in crunch time. Um, what what have you seen execution wise lately um, from from this team down the stretch, and is that encouraging? Sort of big picture, knowing that you guys have been through and made so many mistakes that you're kind of learning. Yeah, yeah, we've been through it a lot, um, and you know, you know, we just want to try to continue to keep improving. Um, you know, throughout you know late games and you know one possession games, two possession games, going down late, and um, tonight we did a good job of being able to execute. Um, you know, defensively and offensively, you know, getting the best shots that we can. And even when we got, you know, one of the good looks that we didn't go in, you know, Thomas was cleaning glass and was able to get us extra possessions or, or second chance points. So that was huge for us. LeBron, of, of the aspects of your game that have kept up over two decades, how much pride do you have in your ability to still be able to get to the rim? Like Mike was saying, I mean, you were you getting to the rim in third corner, I think all six of your baskets in the restricted area. How much pride do you have in that? Um, I'm just an efficient guy. I've always taken pride in being efficient on the floor. Um, you know, I'm also able to score at all three levels on the floor. So if it's a if it's a point in the game where one is not working, I can I can go to the next or, or um, always keep the defense at bay. So um, I had the three ball working earlier in the game. Third quarter um, it wasn't going. I was able to get to the paint. Um, I was able to get to the free throw line. Um, I started getting my, you know, my mid range going as well. So um, I'm just always trying to keep the defense off balance, you know, with my play. And you know, the rim was, uh, you know, very key for us because we was just trying to put more pressure on, 
you know, not only defensively but offensively as well. And, it, you know, um, the rim attacks definitely starts with me, especially in that starting lineup. Last question, Mike. LeBron, while, you know, keeping the main thing, the main thing, as you say, uh, we've been hearing some additionally or, like, positive reports about AD. Uh, Darwin just says he kind of, you know, clearing one hurdle, non-contact, and then contact and waiting the next day. What, what has your mind been there and kind of thinking what, he would bring back to you while still since when he's not actually out there yet, you know, focusing on the games at hand. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to get too excited because uh, I just know what he brings to our ball club. So, you know, I, I am and until um, I want him to just take as much time as he needs. And when he's ready, when he feels like he's ready to put on a uniform and I see him run out with us, then I'll, I'll get excited again. Um, but right now I'm, I'm, I'm locked in on, on, you know, getting this ball club and putting them in a position to be successful every night. Um, you know, and we all we all can't wait for AD to get back, obviously. But you know, whenever that that moment is, we'd be super excited. Uh, but I'm I'm locked in right now on, on what I need to do personally and for this ball club. So uh, you'll see the same for me, no matter what.